Yeah, baby! Hello guys, welcome back to Solo Motion Fix for a quick little breakdown on how I created this little spell casting. So basically I have this uh, basic scene here with three characters, an orc, my hero and my magician here or wizard and uh, my wizard and my uh, hero here they are from Mixamo so those you can uh, download uh, free characters and, and animations from there so, um, and the orc here I got from my asset store uh, uh, heroic fantasy package so basically what I did is with the the orc and the hero here I set them up with the uh, honor AI and uh, on both of them I gave them two different uh, AI groups so on my hero here I gave a play AI group on my orc a orc AI group so they are enemies at each other's and in the scanner layer of course I ensured that they are looking at each other and uh, in order for them to attack each other I also give them uh, weapons so I attached an attack, attack script and uh, you don't have to att attach it to the swore you can just make it a child of the main character here so on this I just set up some damage and some range and a duration and the same with the orc give an attack script and also set up the same settings this way they would attack each other I created a little uh, cube here on my scene, disable the mesh and uh, added a trigger box script on it basically on the trigger script box here it just shows when the character comes in and uh, enters the box uh, it's gonna uh, invoke a healing method set a bool to true on another script called cast spell and this cast spell here I have this public bool here and this healing when I set that when that gets true here in the update if they don't get through, then it's gonna play a cast heal, meaning then it's gonna actually throw the uh, healing spell at the hero. Else, it's gonna set the castle to false. And the remaining here is just uh, I have also a uh, healing uh, coming out of the ground uh, from the cube. For the wizard, I just have free basic animation, standing idle, and then it goes to joy here, and then also has this magic where he actually is gonna cast the spell here right like so and what I did with this this specific clip here I went in and made an animation event so I knew exactly when to hit the fireball around here around this point here shoot healing and this is the method I refer to in my script for my NPC player this is the girl hero here for her I just have attached three extra uh, animation clips one of this saw crouch and this is actually where she's gonna sit down and get the healing and the other one here is gonna jump when she actually gets some healing uh, and then I have this one here and this is for when she actually defeats the orc so on the wizard himself I have this cast spell and uh, as you saw before, I have a game object heal prefab, and uh, this fire point it refers to is a fire point I have from where I want the prefab to shoot from, and then I use my projector electric purple. When I double click that, this is just my animation I have here. You can see I have this heal big, it's gonna spawn another uh, healing effect, which is a particle of it I have also from the access store. So as you can see, this is a hit NM NPC. So if we go back to hit NPC for this one, for this script, I just gonna set up the heal amount 
to 100 and this is actually how you also go in and get access to the healing uh, or to the health on the on AI so basically you're gonna set up a using RV on AI then I'm just uh, setting a private flow heal amount to 100 and then in my trigger this means this is when the uh, magic healing effect actually hits my character when it hits the character on enter then I'm setting up this character get component to the character which is referring to this on AI and if it's not null then it's gonna say access to this heal effect here and inside this heal method here I'm gonna give him the heal amount and the heal amount I've set that to 100 meaning maximum okay and then I'm just instantiating another heal prefab from the box itself and the box I refer to is actually just my healing point that's the box I'm referring to I'm gonna instantiate another healing prefab from there okay so for the node setup if you haven't seen my modifying graphs in on AI please go and see that that definitely helps out and it gives you a good insight on how this works so I'm not gonna go into depth on this one but I'm just gonna show the setup I made so all on AI's comes with a base graph and I just duplicated and made my own Maria base graph and put that up here under AI Maria base graph so this way you won't destroy the original one and then for these nodes I just modified the fight and flee fight and flee right click made a, some utility and uh, this when you click on it you can see this is a high utility win stage which means the order doesn't matter at all it's the one with the highest score and the condition of course that matters so in this case if I click on the fly, uh, fight you can see it has a score of 1 too dangerous it has a score of uh, of one on the on the danger on the courage point one and have attack two so this is uh, a, a special utility with different uh, arrays on it which means it has different parameters it goes in to look at then I made uh, this health below and this one has a high score of 10 but only when the condition is met meaning that the health has to go below uh, 40% and how I did that is I also show that in the other video but in this sum utility you will just go in and hit the plus sign and then I'll go down to my health percentage this one then you get this up here and then I'm gonna put up the graph and then in this uh, curve you get here you can just right click and add keys and then modify them just by dragging them around so and you can see by the number where it is so the way you should remember this is that on the y-axis it's a score from 0 to 1 and from the x-axis it's a percentage from 0 to 100 percent so this this meaning that around here that's 40 percent at 40 percent the score gets 1 okay so when it wins then I want to go to another utility task here and you can do that by adding the plus sign and that's a move to position and a move to position you have different options here I choose the variable game object uh, position and then I gave it the exact name as my healing point which is this the box so this means when the health goes below 40% she will run back to the box and sit there and uh, this healing point you have to remember to actually put that in the AI object up here so go into the your player and then into AI tab there's two ways you can do this. You can, this AI tab is exactly the same as the child AI component which will be created by on AI here. Exactly the same. So click on it and then on the AI on this reference tab this is just reference to the Unity game objects. So in here reference tab you will go in and find or just in my case I just dragged it down in the value point and the exact naming you have you'll put that up here as well. This way it has been referred. So at 40% she will run back to the position and then when she's at the position I'll add it another node and this is just the first utility win stage this is the node where actually the order matters because it's as it says first utility is gonna go from top to bottom and it's gonna go from the first one of course uh, when it gets at the destination but meaning when it gets to this position here then it's gonna I put a block graph in 
for 1.1 second it's gonna stop and then it's gonna play an animation and this animation where I see it's gonna crouch down and the default string you have to exactly name the same wording as it is in your animator meaning so if it was this in here double click that then you will just take this exact name here and put it in there when it plays animation and then crossfade value that's just the fading time it takes to blend it's basically just a blending time where it blends from the previous animation to this one and uh, when it does that play the animation and uh, she gets the box and uh, the mace or the wizard is gonna give her uh, the spell casting and it's gonna give her health of 100% when it gives her 100% then this condition is no longer valid because now we are above 40% and then it's gonna go up and play the other it's gonna go in and execute the other nodes here and it's gonna go into the fight because she's gonna can we see target if uh, if it's false then it's gonna search for target if it's true then it's going to combat mode and also look at if we have a weapon range true but in this case we don't we have a swall so we're doing melee attack down here so if I play it out I just muted the audio you can see what it's doing here it's going to the fight mode if her health gets below let's see if she's fighting let's pause it and it's be, it should be below 40 so in this case let's just say 35 enter then you should see down here it's gonna go from fight to the health below let's see and it does that so now she should run back to the box and our wizard here should cast a spell at her like that and now it's gonna go back she's gonna go back to fight mode and if she wins the battle she's gonna do a victorious animation and so will he he's gonna jump and say yeah baby so that's basically just what I've set up in scripting so that's it and then she will continue back after the default is run out she's gonna go back to move to our wave points so that's it for this short breakdown i hope you find it useful thank you very much guys if you want anything more in detail let me know and i will definitely do that see you on the next one bye